Okay, it says we are live. Um, I know we're a little bit early just for everyone who's uh, thinking they might be a little bit uh, late. Uh, you are not. We're going to start in about maybe five to ten minutes while everyone kind of joins. Uh, it's myself, Master Ali Before, and with me, the great Master Mertens. You've been probably seeing him quite a lot these last uh, uh, few days if you are in the, the similar circles that uh, we are typically in. Uh, obviously, Master Burns has a lot of knowledge um, around growing Taekwondo schools um, and just loves sharing them. Uh, he's, a, he's a great person to, to connect with if you're not already connected. Thanks for joining us, sir. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And uh, you called me great in that introduction. You called me amazing in the email. Now it's like I just get my, my wife or my kids to believe either of those. Uh, <laughs> that would be fine. Uh, that would be fine. Know, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> right? We're, we're called masters and uh, instructors and people follow all of our leadership. But at home, I don't know about you, sir. I'm not in charge at home at all. <laughs> well, my kids are still young. So okay. uh, my daughter is four and my twins are one. Wow. Boy, girl. And so my daughter still thinks, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still the, the, the boss. The daddy knows a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, But come... Come nine more years, I know there's going to be a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot yes. of opposition to that thought for sure. Absolutely. That will definitely be true. I know that's yeah. true. Yeah. Right. And, 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 what, you you have uh, boys and girls, or just girls? I have I have two boys, and I've got. Boys, uh, right. I guess I have to start considering one of them a man. Just about you know, my older son is going to be twenty. He's away at college right now, and uh, right. I've got a younger one um, who's a teenager. You know, in high school, freshman in high school. Right. Uh, but so they are very strong in their opinion. And, uh, you know, they're not going to be calling me Master Dad anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I was chatting with um, with, a, with a parent the other day. I was in Montreal this weekend and her kids are going through and she's three girls. God bless her. Um, I have two girls um, going through the teenage phase. And then the, the stress in her uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> in her face is uh, I'm like, oh, man, I just, and I'm just going to try to enjoy these little baby years. That's uh, right. I can. But why. Uh, no, I know it's it's hard, but yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. yeah. So uh, for, for for those joining us, uh, I know it's 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 one o'clock Eastern. Uh, we did promise that we would start at this time, but typically what we find is that uh, it takes a few minutes for people to join, and so me and Master Mertens will just kind of uh, chit chat here uh, while while everyone gets spooled up and. Um, and gets ready to go. And sir, how's the uh, how's the event coming along in, in April in Texas? Uh, well, fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, we're happy to be hosting once again the, what we call the Taekwondo Professionals National Convention. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had it for the last several years, but this is the first time that instead of being in my headquarters here in Buffalo, which is where our schools are located, that we're moving it to Dallas, Texas. Right. Uh, so we're bringing it you know, basically to the center of the country. So we're a lot closer to everybody. Uh, and I also have been joking, you know, better weather and better Korean food <laughs> <laughs> of being in Dallas for the weekend. So we're looking great. forward to, we've got, we've got great sponsors like yourself. We've got a great roster of speakers again, including yourself. Um, and uh, we're just going to deliver a whole lot of value. And uh, I, I just know that this kind of weekend can be a, a big, powerful uh, influence on the direction of someone's school. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have um, uh, a friend who's actually going to reach out to you about uh, both technical professionals and, and mentorship and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really important. We tend to forget that, uh, you know, as athletes, we remember you, you just have to have a coach as an athlete. You don't even think about it, right? Uh, but then we're like, okay, when we get into our business part of our lives, um, we forget that our coach is just as equally important, especially if your background is only competitive. You know nothing about business. Uh, you don't realize it uh, until you are ish actually into it. So getting a coach, getting uh, access to people that um, have done it and can you can just bounce ideas off of and going to an event like yours are, are, are going to be key. So definitely recommend that for everybody. Uh, and one of the, you know, we're going to be talking about just about one of the topics that I'm sure people are going to be covering um, uh, at your at your event, whether it's during the the roundtables that naturally happen through dinner or even one of the presenters, uh, and our topic is an interesting one: how to get adult students yes. to to join. Yeah, that's uh, you know, it's funny because uh, I, I know you uh, 
you're of this era as well, where martial arts used to never not be for kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, that was, I wasn't in that area. I think that was one generation before me. It was that I remember Master Arlene Lemus, she used to say that, uh, yeah, that she uh, uh, was a, a special case where they allowed her to train, but usually people mm. when they were, were adults. Uh, and now it's kind of like completely the opposite where most of them are, are, are younger. And so, you know, um, how do we get it so that we get to, the adults to join? And uh, I, I know you have a lot of experience and some great insights. And um, I think this is like one of the most asked questions, actually, when we post okay. questions in our Facebook group. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's how to, to get adults. So I'm eager to get your insights and advice. And also uh, for those, uh, you know, watching this, this is going to be, there is going to be a Q&A uh, aspect yep. of this as well. So anything specific that you have, please post it in the comments and uh, we'll address them. So. That's, uh, that's today's topic. So we'll, we'll get started in, in a few minutes. But uh, how's, uh, how's Buffalo, sir, right now? Uh, Buffalo is cold, sir. <laughs> very, very cold. Yeah. Uh, I know that you're Toronto. up in to Toronto, so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we share similar client, uh, climate. But, you know, we always say Buffalo has two seasons, winter and 4th of July. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, just, uh, we, do, we do have snow for a very long time. I know people might be thinking, hey, spring will be here in March. Well, Spring is not yeah. March. Spring is not in March in Buffalo. It's not even April in Buffalo. It's really more like May. Right. Uh, but it makes for great Taekwondo training. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody's going to be inside anyway. So. It's yeah. A good time for us. Yeah. 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 We exactly. Don't we don't mind. Yeah. And to go back to your, you know, statement again, we won't, we won't start all, all of our content for another minute or two. But you're right. Mm. You know, I, I I started my Taekwondo training thirty. I can't believe it's been that long, but it was 37 years ago. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think if I'm right, that that's just a little bit before the Karate Kid movies came out and before mm. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out. So it was that early 80s when things started to change a little bit. Um, right. And Taekwondo was more appealing. But definitely, particularly some of my seniors who I trained with who had started martial arts, you know, 5, 10, 15 years before me, um, they really came from an old school, hardcore uh, type of experience with martial art classes and the idea of <clears throat> four-year-old kids, five-year-old kids taking martial art classes, you know, right. seemed bizarre to them. I remember the first time that one of my seniors saw somebody's ad about, you know, birthday parties. And uh -huh. he was like, you know, <laughs> just thought that this was the most bizarre thing in the world that you could have a birthday party in a, in a Taekwondo school. Right. Uh, we didn't understand what that was. And obviously there's been great growth in our industry and a lot of positives by taking our martial art training and bringing it to children mm. uh, for their character development, for their physical development. But we don't want to lose the opportunity to train adults. We don't want to uh, lose the opportunity to influence adults through martial art lifestyle and martial art mindset. Right. And um, uh, hopefully I'll give some suggestions and some recommendations of how, how we're doing that and uh, how people can bring it to their school. Because it's, hey, it's, it's, it's wonderfully rewarding to teach uh, children, but it's fun to teach adults too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's getting into that mindset. And for, for those that don't know, um, Master Mertens has, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, sir, uh, five schools with over 1,800 students that uh, that you're directly in control of, or, or at least within your, I guess, your, your, your first yes. circle. But then within your, your outer rings, it's like, about a million schools or something like that. <laughs> we're a little, we're a little short of a million, but okay. uh, I guess the real quick bio would be that um, along with my original instructor and mentor, Grandmaster Sun Chong, we own and operate five locations in the suburbs of Buffalo, New York. Uh, work with about eighteen hundred active students, children, and adults, as we'll speak oh, about today. Numbers. Yeah, good for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then we've had some tremendous success with our staff. Uh, we have at this point twenty four former staff uh, who, with our blessings, have gone out and opened their own wow, uh, world-class Taekwondo centers around the country. Because many of them have multiple schools, there's actually another 35 uh, world-class schools out there basically teaching our curriculum and using our system. And, right. and for the most part, being uh, very, very, we're very proud of them. They've been very successful in, in wherever they've gone. And they're right. all over the country. Yeah, so that's a, that's a lot of knowledge to, to draw from. Um, so uh, for those that are joining us uh, live, you know, the opportunity to ask this Q&A will be great for those that are going to watch this afterwards. Still great content, uh, but definitely take this opportunity to um, to get involved. Um, so with that, uh, it is a five minute mark. Oh, sorry, six minutes. Uh, we will officially get started. Uh, for those joining us, uh, my name is Master Ali Gafour from 2020 Armor. Uh, I have with me Master uh, Michael Mertens, 
um, owner of five schools and over 1800 students. And uh, the topic for today is how to recruit adult students. And uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, ideas in and around that. I know this has been the number one uh, question that we get in our, in our Facebook group for 2020 Armor. So um, you know, we, we took that concept and we asked Michael Mertens if he can expand on his experience on that. And then for those that are, are joining this, this, this feed, please ask your questions at any time. We'll do the Q and A at the end, uh, but uh, ask them at any time so we have them queued up and, and, and then so we can uh, address them for you. So I guess kicking that off with, um, oh, and, and before we start also, uh, if you guys are kind of wondering how to kind of get more involved in, in, um, in the Taekwondo community outside of your own school, uh, Master Mertens has this great, great uh, program called Taekwondo Professionals. If you don't know what the address is, it's right on his shirt, uh, taekwondoprofessionals.com. And he has an event in April in Texas um, that uh, he brings a whole bunch of speakers, uh, also uh, other uh, Taekwondo masters. Uh, and you know what's funny? You think the successful ones are oh, they're successful, they don't show up. No, they're, they're, they're the ones, the most successful people are the ones who show up consistently. It's crazy. Yeah. They're always still uh, getting ideas. So you'll be surrounded by uh, people that do great things. And uh, that's really a great way to, uh, to expand your school. Because again, if you can take one idea and apply it, that's, that's worth way more than the, the, the ticket and the flight and, uh, and the hotel. Um, yeah, and so I definitely want you guys to, to continue your education uh, through um, through uh, these these events like that Michael Michael Mertens is hosting, and uh, and then we also are offering a special for today. Uh, it's we have a five twenty five flat uh, fee uh, for the for the vests, and so uh, feel free to capitalize on that. And um, yeah, and with that, we will get started with the first question, sir. To you, what are some of the challenges to building an adult program? And where do most schools fail? Wow, big, big question. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely correct that you know at this current stage, a lot of our industry is primarily uh, becoming, uh, you know, working just with children. And some people have even told me, "Oh, I have a hundred person school or hundred fifty person school, and I've got like six adults." Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, right. Um, that's not an uncommon s scenario. So I guess. I, I, um, We'll, I know you have a series of questions for me, so I'll say as an overview that we may say that they are targeting the wrong adults, which I'll talk about what are the right adults maybe a little bit later, but they may be targeting the wrong adults. They may be trying to fit a round peg into a square hole by saying that, oh, if you want fitness kickboxing, yes, we have it with traditional martial arts when you really don't. Or if you want to get six pack abs, you know, you can do it through martial arts and you really can't, at least not just alone with uh, at uh uh, you know, with a, a recreational class, mm -hmm. um, and that in general, their approach of their, perhaps their facility appearance, their online advertising language, and even the interactions with their staff are not done in a way that's going to meet the needs of the adult market. But I would say the main point that I'm going to emphasize, because to me, when you talk about successful marketing, I learned a long time ago, it's about having, and I'm sorry that it's a animal type reference, but it's about having the right bait for the right critter, you know, yeah, the right thing that you're trying to catch. And mm -hmm. so we'll talk a little bit about both of those. But the first one to me is, all right, when we talk about the adult that we're looking for, I can't, I can tell you that we have hundreds of adults in our schools, but we don't have a hundred 19 to 23 year old uh, fitness freak oriented adults. And I mean, freak in a good way that they're trying to be, you know, Instagram models or whatever. Right, right. That fit. That's not the adults that I'm going to talk to you about recruiting. And that's not necessarily the adult that I think you want to recruit for a high end martial arts school program. Right. Well, that's a lot to unpack there just in the first few seconds. So, uh, <laughs> see, this is what we mean by, uh, you know, by surrounding yourself with, uh, uh, you know, people who have been successful like Michael Mertens, because just within that uh, that one minute, there was about, I think I counted five different strategies that you could, uh, you, you're probably doing wrong uh, in, in trying to address your, uh, or, or, or get the adults into your program. So let's start with that that first one, the, the type, I think you mentioned of adult, and you alluded to age. Right, right. So, I mean, I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag and say to me, when I talk about who our students are, I would use the phrase, you know, every advertiser or if they want us to spend money for an ad or for online marketing where they'll say, OK, who is your target market? And my mm -hmm. answer to who is our target market is children between the ages of four and 12 
maybe even four and 10, 11, and their parents. And when I use right. the phrase their parents, I mean adults between the ages of probably 35 to 55 years old. Right. Uh, and so I have basically, and maybe there's somebody else out there that's doing well with it, but I've essentially given up or don't see the value in trying to market to the 20 to 35 year old uh, type of adult. Now, but there's some practical reasons for this, right? The adults at that age level, uh, a little bit earlier in their in their careers, uh, so financial uh, uh, situation is a little bit different. Right. Uh, their focus for fitness is very much on performance or appearance, um, and even a little bit of the social element that they want to look for being around other people like them. And so they're going to more likely want to go to, in many cases, the high price big box. I'm sorry, the low price big box gym, um, and they're going to be looking to do so probably, you know, before work or right after work type of hours. Um, and, and this isn't our typical martial arts school hours. Mm -hmm. um, so we found that changing our target to being the 35 to 55 year old adult looking to train with their child or looking to do something for recreational fitness mm -hmm. um, dramatically affects the results that we can have when, when we're um, bringing adults into our program. So those are what we would call in a way, the right kind of adults right. for this purpose. Right. And I guess, Maybe you did. Uh, maybe you knew that uh, right out the gate. Um, how did you figure? It, how did you figure that out? What did you try in the past? Uh, I, I, the reason I bring that up is some people might be doing certain things right now. Be like, well, I, I'm going to try this. I think it might work. I'm sure, sure. you found something that didn't work and came to this. Yeah, yeah. right. Now, I mean, you know, again, I I have never had time when I've been in front of students that I regretted it. Right. Someone just asked me if I would do a demonstration that was like 40 minutes away from our school for a for a bereavement group, a group of parents who had lost a child. I mean, uh, what you know, a terrible, tragic you know, type of situation. Hmm. Right. And it, unfortunately, I happen to have a conflict that I'm literally not in town that weekend. But otherwise, I would have said yes to that, knowing right. that I'm not going to get a chance to recruit anybody. But maybe through my message, I could inspire them or motivation or just let them have a fun social experience and learn a little bit of martial arts. Right. But to, to your point, I guess I'm going to say that we, quote, wasted time doing self-defense uh, for high school you know, groups. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, if we were invited I in, that commonly we, done, yeah, right now, right. Mm -hmm. we wasted time doing uh, booths at a 5K or a half marathon race um, where everybody there was pretty much already committed to this as their main, you know, right. fitness uh, method. Right, um, makes sense. Yeah, and you know, and we would have wasted time, I guess, taking phone calls back in the heyday of Tabo, Tybo, and kickboxing. And when people say, oh, do you, you know, we want to look for fitness kickboxing, we say, oh, well, actually, we teach martial arts. It's the same thing or it's, you know, Taekwondo, same thing. And bringing those prospects in, again, who are at that younger age, who are looking for that really high intensity type of fitness training hmm. and then not being a match. So right. I would say, yes, my my experience with fishing in the wrong ponds with the wrong bait uh, is really what, you know, kind of led us to this conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen a lot of clubs uh, try that. Um and uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be something. Hopefully, that someone uh, that resonates with somebody and, and saves them some some time, and and can direct that energy and focus to, uh, to something else. And but by, by the way, the other thing I, I also want to mention to this group is, um, you know, you're going to hear a lot of. Uh, uh, hopefully, you you get you take the opportunity to hear a lot of advice from uh, from a lot of people. But um, what we also know is that each little location is a little bit different. Right. Um, so I guess, can you talk, can you talk about that? Cause I think I, I hear this a lot from club owners, but like, well, I'm a little bit different because where I am is a little bit different. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, I guess, the generality of what you've been saying so far to, 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 to different clubs? Got it. Um, well, I guess I'll say there is some, you know, we have to be able to separate reality and perception. Um, sure. There's some reality that my locations are in the suburbs of Buffalo, New York that our students travel from three to five miles away, that commuting is no problem, and that most of the adults in our area live in the suburbs and then drive into downtown to work if, if, if that's where they work. Mm -hmm. Definitely there's some other people on this call who have schools in very urban areas, lots of high rises, and they might have a more adult populace around them that's younger, that's looking for fitness that they might be able to tap into. Mm -hmm. But it's my impression, the majority of school owners who are listening to this are running uh, suburban martial arts schools 
catering to a high end, you know, more affluent clientele. And right. here's one thing that I can guarantee. I don't know everybody who's listening to this and where they are, whether they're North, South, East, West, Canada, or US, but one thing I can guarantee, every single child that's in your school has a parent. <laughs> that is true. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. I'm not gonna get into all the science involved in that, but I'm positive of that fact. And so yeah. therefore, mm. the, so you would not have to, you would not be able to say, oh, we don't have any adults who are interested in our program Perhaps you might unfortunately have to say, I don't know if our program is interesting enough to the adults and yeah, or to right. the parents who are seeing, who are coming through and seeing our classes. Right, right. Okay. And then, so it sounds like you are, so are you focused on getting the, the students to recruit their families or how, how are you, how are you getting them, them both involved? So essentially you're getting the 35 to 55, which is the parents. Right. What, what is that kind of, look like in that recruitment process so for quite a long time we have emphasized if somebody said what programming do you have in your school then i'm going to say directly oh we offer a little tigers program for our four and five year olds we offer a children's program for our you know five six to twelve year olds we have a teen and adult program these are all separate classes that are held so we have classes for children for little tigers for adults and we have a family class, right? We have a class that parents can come to with their children. And as right. some people may have seen on my Facebook posts, the largest class virtually every day in every one of our locations, sometimes getting into the quantities of 40 and 50, and yes, we've had 70 show up for a class before, wow. is, the, is the family class, the opportunity for parents to train. Now, again, we don't offer, you know, we can, we'll, talk about all the little elements in a moment. It's not the only type of class we offer for adults that want to train. We do have an adult only class. It's still uh, relatively popular and there's even some mix and match. I would say the families that enjoy our program do mix and match. They have children that go just to the children's class once in a while. Um, that's going to have the most structure and the most focus on the curriculum. We've got the adult program. It's going to be a little bit more fitness and self-defense oriented. It's still the same curriculum. And then we do have the family class where they'll train side by side in the same class with their child. It's still always the same progressive belt system, white belt to black belt. Right. But we just offer different opportunities for them to go, uh, you know, for their training session. Now, is the age range the same for your adult class and your family class? Is that still the same 35 to 55? So the family class, so what we do that's worked well for us are little tigers because they're four and five. We actually don't allow, you know, if a parent said, I want to train with my four-year-old, we would say, I'm sorry, you know what, we don't offer that alternative. Right. Uh, because at four and five in their very beginning starting, they would be too easily distracted or disruptive to that right. larger family class. Um, so family class for us is any child that's eligible for our regular program and their parent. As a result, and these are just little nuances that are important. There's really no adults who are coming to the family class. No, no 20 year old or 30 year old or 40 year old adult who's just joined on their own. We right. want to go to the family class and know that there's going to be 20 or 25 kids there. Right. <clears throat> but it works well. So I would say, no, if someone said, Master Merge, you can't do that. You can't train adults and children together. I would say we don't train adults and children together. We train families together. Mm -hmm. And that's all the difference in the world. Right. I just got a flashback of Seinfeld and Kramer. Going into <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am, I am, so the, heavy, I am, the, I am the heavyweight champion of our Little Tigers class. I can guarantee that. I can take all of them. <laughs> got it. So do not put Kramer with the six-year-olds. If anything, take away, take away that. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> Uh, before we get in, 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 into, uh, I, have, I was going to get into the marketing. Anything else, I guess, on, on, on the adult and family classes before we get into how to market to them? I mean, I think that's the main, you know, the the, the main structure. And, okay. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing, more than willing, while, while not encouraging people to just uh, copy and paste, you know, to tell anybody, hey, just, just visit the website of my own school, right? Look at buffalotkd.com. And that's not an advertisement for my school because I know people are watching this, not going to come and enroll in my center. Um, and just look at the language and the photos and the type of emphasis we have on our, on our family program. Uh, yeah. But it, it, it's, it's been successful from day one. Obviously, we'll talk about some of the techniques for handling it properly, but right, it works. Right. Uh, I got a tongue in cheek comment from uh, one of, uh, uh, my friends, and he, he was making fun that his city is a small city and that they're not really affluent. 
But then uh, to your point, uh, every kid has a parent there, even even That's in right. your small town. I'm pretty sure you haven't figured out how to make babies without parents <laughs> yet. Um, so uh, that's my comment to you, yes, Mr. Sir. Uh, <laughs> I will say his name, I will say his name. Okay, <laughs> sure. got it. Um, okay, so then let's let's talk about the, the, the marketing strategies yes. uh, to, to recruit the, those guys. So you are, as you said, you're not talking about uh, uh, some of the typical things we see in, in other kind of fitness programs. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, um, once again, do we have any 23-year-old adult men or women in our program? Yes, we do, right? right. Um, are they sort of uh, unicorns in our program? Yes, they are. Do we have some 17 to 20-year-old, you know, teenagers or college students in our program? Sure, we do. A lot of times they're actually students who grew up with us from when they were younger, you know, and then they stayed with our program, you know, through, through to that age. Um, but uh, as far as where our marketing efforts go of talking to the 35 to 55 year old parent, um, there's a couple different things. First of all, again, is establishing that family class from the beginning. We know that month after month, our phone is going to ring and our email is going to ding with parents who are interested in classes for their child. Right. Uh, and as soon as they come into our center, we focus on enrolling their child. We focus on connecting with the parent about the needs for their child. But 100% of the time, we're going to point out to that parent, hey, uh, when we're reviewing our class schedule, just so you know, your child is eligible to come to any of these family classes as well. And you're um, invited to participate with them. You, you know, if you join, you can get involved with them as well. Um, and many, many families do this. And that plants the seed. We don't actually necessarily enroll a lot of parents right off the bat if they came just looking for the classes for their child. Mm -hmm. We plant the seed and we start helping them to be aware that that, that concept is, is out there. And then, of course, they're going to see parents walking in with their children in uniform, you know, to take classes. And, so, and, I'll, and I'll talk about it. I don't want to go too much at one time. But I can talk about throughout the year, we do a number of different events uh, to try and break down that barrier to get them onto the mat and out of the stands. Right, right. Um, I'm going to get to a couple of questions, a quick questions, uh, just because um, I know some people are asking. But before I do, just for some people that are joining, uh, my name is Master Ali Gafour from 2020 Armor, and I have uh, Master Michael Mertens here, owner of five schools, over 1,800 students. And our topic is if you haven't kind of figured it out yet is how to um, uh, attract adult students. And um, Master Michael Mertens has an event in April called Taekwondo Professionals in, uh, uh, in, in, in Texas. And if you go to taekwondoprofessionals.com, you can find out more about that. And, uh, and we also have a deal for $525 US per vest going on today because of this webinar. Um, and uh, and this webinar will be will be posted so uh, you can uh, review uh, some of the earlier uh, questions and, and, and answers that we had. Um, so someone uh, asked, sir, what's your website for your school? Someone was asking for a schedule. Oh, for our school, our school website is Buffalo, like our city, B U F F A L O T K D, like Taekwondo, Buffalo TKD.com. And if they're wondering about the class times for family classes, um, yes. I would say the simple way of saying it is that they're all going to be after dinner type hours. So it's oftentimes, you know, we know that we need our prime time, 4 o'clock to 6, 6.30, 6.45 needs to be for our children's classes. Um, and so our family classes a lot of times are 6.45 or even 7.30 at night. Uh, Saturday afternoons, they're going to be at like 11 or 12 o'clock. Um, uh, you know, later in the mid morning uh, time. And I guess if someone says, oh, you know, 730 at night, that's too late for someone to come with their seven or eight year old. Well, as I posted on Facebook with photos and pictures and video, um, tell that to the 50 people who are there for class. Uh, yeah. Because actually parents, you know, they've got to get done with work. They maybe got a little homework to get done with their child. They've got to, you know, have dinner together and then they come to Taekwondo. Uh, right. And it works. It works. Right. Okay, great. Um, so you figured out the age range, uh, you figured out who not to target to, you figured out some of the events to go to or not go to, um, you figured out a little bit how to market to them, um, you figured out the time, now what do you actually do in the class? <laughs> so is there a difference um, in, in, in the language that you use in a child, in a, in a child class or, or adult class? 
Right. So as I mentioned, you know, for our system, at least for us, children, white belt to black belt, uh, and let's say, again, not a little tiger, but a, a, a four or five, but a six-year-old to 12-year-old, what they learn to go from white belt to black belt in our system, in our schools, is identical to what their parent would learn to go hmm. from white belt to black belt. Right. So, yes, now we line up a class. And, you know, I consider it really the genius of my mentor and grandmaster, Grandmaster Chung, that, you know, our skeleton format for our class is a very similar, but yet very engaging all the time. So in what we do in a 50 minute uh, family class, we're going to warm up together. OK, now that warm up is appropriate, whether you're a yellow belt, green belt, blue belt or red belt. Right. We're going to do some calisthenics and basic stretching and just get some energy in the class. We're mm -hmm. going to do some basics and fundamentals, horse riding stance, punch and stretching kicks. Everybody can do it, does it to their own level. Right. We're going to do partner drill training. You, sir, are a, a former elite uh, competitor. I was a former uh, national level competitor, not a national team member competitor. But um, the training drills we do are a lot of partner drills back and forth. Now, mm -hmm. I will say that when we do partner drills, we do not, and probably in the minority of times, do we partner parents with their children because mm -hmm. the 35 year old, six foot tall, 200 pound dad and their seven year old, you know, uh, 50 pound child aren't going to really make good, great partners for doing drills back and right. forth. Um, so we still consider it a family class that the parents having fun and um, getting a good workout, doing the same activities with their child. But their child's actually going to enjoy more being paired with a child. The adult's right. going to enjoy more being paired with them. And once again, who is that adult paired with? Hey, they're paired with another dad. They're right. paired with another mom. Um, so they're enjoying the camaraderie of that experience. Right. We then we'll break into curriculum um, after we've done a, drill, a number of drills, including sparring. Um, and when we break into curriculum, yes, we're going to have many, many different groups. But what we find, uh, and, and we're, we're a larger school, so all the numbers are bigger, the number of students on the floor and the number of instructors. But I want to point out, we're never going to have enough instructors to run one instructor to every group. So it's not like we have 10 different belts out there and we have 10 different instructors. Right. However, the adults who come to a family class know that, oh, for a period of time, I might be working with my group and okay, I'm the adult with a, with a couple of children. Okay, we're gonna review it. The instructors are gonna stop over. We're gonna give some touch and some feedback. We're going to go to another group. We're going to go to another group. So yeah. a skilled instructor with 15 minutes can easily touch and give valuable feedback to two or three groups. And Grandmaster Chung told me a long time ago, and I've seen it to be true. You might think that the parents and children class is chaos. The kids behave better when their mom and dad are in the same exact room, only a couple of feet away from them right. than they sometimes do in a regular uh, children's class. So right. it's right. really about setting up the right culture and a culture of camaraderie um, right. that, that is a big part of making family class successful. Yeah. You know, I want to also touch on one of the other things when you talk about the programming for, for families. We found this as well. Um, you know, we thought the, the 2020 armor vest would be used mainly for, 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 for children, for kids. But what we found was the adults, they, um, they loved uh, tracking their, they like tracking their, themselves. They, uh, they liked seeing how hard they hit their reaction time their stamina, these sort of things. Uh, they actually, and then they, with the family classes, they, they go against their kids. Uh, so they actually kind of see how hard they hit against each other. So that's one of the ways, um, you know, 2020 Armor has been used for, for adult programs. And again, it doesn't have to be about, you know, trying to get to a, a certain heart rate or, or uh, uh, this, these huge, very structured physical goals, but even just kind of knowing, oh, you know, um, this is where I am with my power, this is where I'm with my action, or I can at least play with my kid a game that we can both measure to see who the winner is. They kind of find that very fun as well. Um, and um, so, you know, we, we talked about the programming and, and, and some of the language that, 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 you, that you have for your family class. And so I'm just looking at my notes down here on my phone here. Um, is there, a, what, one of the things that uh, I wanted to ask is in terms of, um, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Sorry, a little bit of messages. I'm trying to do a whole bunch of things at once. Uh, I'll, I'll ask one of the questions here from, from the yes, group. Yes, I see that. Um, in terms of the, um, uh, I guess, women uh, specifically, one of, one, of, uh, one of the things you talked about before was, you know, you kind of, you, uh, 
you, you had classes that were for self-defense for, for teenagers, but that didn't uh, bear any fruit. What yeah. about women only classes and how that pertains to adults and, and, and family classes and all that? Have you found that to, to, to work or be successful? Because that sounds intuitively like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Right, right. Um, you know what? I don't want to have a male instructor bias because I've only lived my but I've only lived my life in a in a, in a male body. Um, mm -hmm. I am married, as I think you are, to a black belt wife. Um, well, my wife's not a black belt, oh, but oh, she no? can, yeah, she can put one on and then. <laughs> okay, got it. So my apologies there, but you know, I'm married to a black belt wife. We met as as. Um, uh, uh, colleagues in our, our, our university Taekwondo team. And we have many female master instructors within our organization. Um, one of the head instructors at our head location is a female master instructor. Um, so I can't say that there's anything wrong with a all women's class. We've never, I guess, you know, had heavy requests to do so or, or needed to do so. And again, okay. Okay. I guess if I was trying to fit it into my schedule, I guess I would say that, um, you know, uh, from a purely uh, practical point of view, if you said to me, oh, I'm going to do a women's only class and I'm going to have 10 women come to this or I'm going to have a family class and I'm going to have 50 people come to this and oh, including man. including the 10 women, then yeah, I'm going to say, okay, that to me has more, you know, again, just simply more mass appeal. There are definitely mm -hmm. different topics that you would focus on if you had a purely all women class. Um, so family class is a different animal. I realize, you know, that if people are logging into this, they're saying, OK, cool, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to learn how to boost up my adult program. I'm kind of giving them a slightly different answer. I'm saying, well, if you want to boost your adult program, actually create a family program. But right. I do want to say one more time, as a result of having a popular family program, when we teach our adult class and we look out at our adult class, a lot of the adult class members just coming even by themselves are parents who also got started because their child was involved. And then right. they mix and match. Sometimes they come with their child. Sometimes they come for an adult session. So nothing right. at all wrong with an all women's class. Um, but I, I might say that for growing the numbers in your school or having more mass appeal, for, for us personally, I've got great experience with the family class. Okay. Um, one, one of the questions that we that we uh, started this, this, this segment on, on, on the marketing strategies, um, and one of the questions that came in uh, during the chat is, do you have any sort of discounted rates for parents who want to join the family class program? Right. So uh, the way that we do our system is we have our first student that enrolls at our regular rate. Um, and it's, I would say, a you know, a competitive but high, higher end rate for a martial arts school in our town. And uh, then we give a $40 discount for an additional family member, a $70 discount for the third family member. For us, again, this still puts the numbers up over, you know, 350 plus. Well, you know what? I'll just say it. I think we have a number of different programs, but our base rate is somewhere in the $169 to $185 range for the first member. Uh, that means it's more in the 150s for the second member. And then it's going to be a little bit closer to $100 for the third member. So we're going to be, you know, well over $350-ish for three people. But at that point, we then stop. So uh, mm -hmm. for us, the family rate, the maximum rate is the three member rate. Um, and we like that idea. If someone says, oh, but what about that fourth member, that fifth member? Or sometimes there's a family of six or seven. Once again, you know, those, that, that number of family size these days is relatively rare to begin with. Right. And if they join together, we would rather actually have that fourth or fifth, quote, free member because we think they're going to add to the retention of the other family members. Mm -hmm. And you really don't know, you know, once in a while we'll have a whole family of five make it to Black Belt together, but perhaps the family of five starts together, enjoys the experience together, but along the way, one or two family members aren't quite as into it as the other ones. Maybe right. they fade back. Um, it's just not un un uncommon. So anyway, that's that's been our recommendation in our system for a few years now. Base price, second family member discount, third family member discount, and at that point it caps off and it's just a family rate for however many family members they have. Right, right. That's very smart. Um, again, I have Ma uh, Master Mertens here with me, owner of five schools on over 1,800 students. We're talking about the uh, the strategies to to grow your adult program, uh, you know, Taekwondo in uh, martial arts. Well, Taekwondo specifically, actually. I shouldn't say martial arts. MMA is a little bit more focused, I think, on the adults uh, than, than the kids. But Taekwondo, for sure, in, in North America, does have is skewed more towards kids and children. 
but that's a, an opportunity, a lost opportunity for, for adults. And so we are on the, 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 the broader topic of marketing. And one of the questions uh, we, we we're gonna discuss is how do you actually advertise this both internally and externally um, so that people even know this thing exists, this, this family class and, 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 then, and then how do you how do you even talk about what do you say the benefits are? Got it, got it. Um, and I'm just making some notes on the questions that I see coming up, which I'm very thankful and I know you are too, that a lot of people are participating yes. in this process asking questions about the uh, number of classes and times and curriculum. Okay, just wanna be aware of that so I can prep my myself in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, as Matt far Murray as marketing- is always prepped, by the way, for you guys that come from Matt Murray, he is always prepped. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir, I'm a note taking. I, I'm probably single-handedly buying, buying all the yellow pads on this side, I'm pretty sure, because I get a new order every couple of weeks. Uh, um, um, all right, so as far as, uh, uh, advertising externally and internally. Um, first of all, uh, internally is the majority of it. Um, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. I don't know that that often uh, that we get a phone call or an email from someone saying, hey, I'm interested in signing up for classes with my children. Um, right. That doesn't tend to be the way that they come into our center, right. uh, but it is something that we convert over later on. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, number one, our family class is very visible. Uh, depending on our center, I believe pretty much all of them have our family class held at least four times a week, if not six times a week, depending on the size of the school. Wow. Uh, so they're going to see that on the class schedule. So it's not just a special one-off type of thing. It's one of our main, you know, training options uh, right. for membership. So parents are going to see that on the class schedule. They're going to see that on our website when they're first learning about our program. Then what I think works best is having multiple events throughout the year designed to break down the barrier, the physical barrier in a way, and the virtual barrier of the parent getting on the mat. And the quick version of that would be that a few times a year, we run an event called a parent's workshop, which is a little bit of a coaching session to help a parent on how to help their child. And we tell them that we're gonna give them some strategies, which we do, um, about how to communicate with the instructors and how to motivate their child but we also want them to experience what their child experiences. And so we have a fun little workout with them. And we're gonna do that a couple times a year. We're going to have a mom and me class on the weekend of Mother's Day. And that happens, that's usually definitely one of the days where we pack every dot, you know, and we, you know what I mean is every spot on the mat. Right. We might have 60, 70, 80 uh, children, you know, a combination of children and the parents coming together to celebrate Mother's Day. We'll do a similar promotion on Father's Day. And then we'll have a little more targeted, I guess, from a marketing point of view. Um, we've always had uh, family month in the month of December uh, where we encourage the parents. And that's where we will give a little extra discount or extra equipment packages mm -hmm. if they enroll with their child. And for the last few years, we've had the companion of that, I guess, at the other time of year, which is siblings train free or family train free for the summer. Um, and we want to get the parents there. I guess what I would say is this. I think you could you could go wrong giving free training to the average person that walks in off the street. But I don't think you will ever go wrong giving some period of free training to a parent whose child's in your program. Mm -hmm. So if you want to give out a free yellow belt course to celebrate a month, or if you want to give out a free you know, class uh, to them you know, for the mom and me day or the dad and me day, um, yeah. We always find it to be productive. I will mention that it's a drip method type of plan, meaning someone came to the mom and me class with their child. They thought it was a lot of fun. They didn't enroll. They you know, saw the promotion over the summer that we were letting the parents train for free during the summer, but they were busy and doing a lot of vacation stuff. And then come the fall and they say, you know what? I'm ready to do this. So it's yeah. just not an unusual thing. Um, I would encourage people that we've had parents join our program whose children have been white belts, yellow belts, green belts, red belts. There are parents, it always surprises me, there are parents who register and get started after their child just tested for their black belt. And sometimes I was say, you've been watching for three years? It took you three <laughs> years to get started. Up, uh, how, yeah, how to do it first, right? <laughs> right? But, um, but it, 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 it definitely happened. So um, I just wanna really say to people as, uh, by a way of getting value, when we finish this call today, I hope that you you are able to take some action that adds five or 10 adults into your program just right, by right. simply 
uh, targeting a little differently and, and offering some of these opportunities because I, I know it's going to work. So it's, it sounded like it was nine, a hundred, I was going to say 99%, but a hundred percent internally, like no externally at all. Um, you know what? I just, I, I'm sorry, sir. I have a little ADHD. So I, I didn't finish answering the question. Yeah. I guess externally we do not, uh, I don't know that we do it any differently. You know, if we have, uh, again, on our website, we advertise our little tigers program, our children's program, our right. dog program and our family class. So it's, it's definitely an equal section on our website. Right. Uh, I was literally on the phone with our online marketing person today. And, you know, we have some new pictures that we took and we'll be putting some Facebook ads for our family program, just like we have ads for our, you know, children's program. Okay. So you do, so you do use that as a way to get people to, to join. So you think that getting advertising the family program is a way to get people to join? Uh, yes. But again, I think what's happening, even when we're advertising the family program, is we're saying we're putting it in their head and then they're going to say, let me get down there. OK, let me see if she likes it first. Let me see if he likes it first mm. and then I'll consider. And sometimes parents want to even let their child have their thing or get with their group first or get comfortable right. with it first and, and, and then they'll join um, later on. So right. I do think I do think it should be out there just as visible as the rest of your programs. Mm. Um, but again, don't be surprised if you, you don't get uh, phone calls like crazy about parents wanting to enroll the whole family right away. I would really honestly say the majority of it, majority of it is what I call leapfrogging in. So one person, then the next one happens after that. And I talked about parents joining when their child's already in the program. You know what? Sometimes that other spouse joins even after that. So right. little Susie, little Susie joined as a little tiger. Her brother was watching for a while and then he got started. Then mom, who was regularly bringing the kids, decided she was going to get started. We just had this actually before the year ended last year. And then right. dad, who I'd never met, who had never been to any of the classes because his schedule was different, he decided, hey, my, my whole family's spending all their time at Taekwondo. Now right. I've got to get involved. So the dad is the lowest. He's a yellow belt. Mom's a green belt. The daughter's a blue belt. The, the little daughter's a, a, a little tiger. It happens all the time. Right. So 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 this advertising that you, you, know, you say you're doing on Facebook for the family program, um, is it targeted to your, your current membership then? Uh, you don't, you don't do that at all externally. Uh, so our organic, you know, we obviously would promote all of the internal family events organically, right? right. So we're going to say July is family month. We're right. going to say train for free this summer. We're going to say parents workshop coming up. So right. you know, there's, there's always something fun going on at world-class Taekwondo. We like to say, right. So we'll have organic posts for that all the time. Right. Um, but we do, again, it's part of our advertising campaign to have Google ads and Facebook ads right. around the Facebook content. And, you know, what I would really say is and maybe perhaps we can chat a little bit about the language related with that, because yeah. whether yeah. it's for externally or internally, mm. um, it's important to have. Again, this is part of the, the we said about you know, we've got the right target market. But now if we say, hey, would you like to do martial arts with your with your child? Cool, because we've got a very intense, full contact self-defense program that will teach you and your child how to be safe in any scenario. Well, oops, right. wait a second. We had the right target, but we had, you know, we had the wrong language for them. Right, right, right. OK, um, I had one more uh, one more question and then uh, we'll uh, get to any questions that we didn't uh, yes. get to in, in the comments. I think I know the answer to this, but just in case, um, how do you incorporate fitness in order to beat the gyms at their own game? I think I know the answer because I've been paying attention, obviously. Okay. But, um, if someone, you know, I guess someone might think right. be framing it in this way. Uh, how would you? How would you answer to that? Yep. So again, one thing I'm aware, you know, uh, I think one thing that you need to do as a business person is decide who your target market is and who you're, how you're going to serve them. At the same time, related with that has to also be that you know who your target market is not and what you're not going to do, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, we could, uh, tonight in family class or in our adult classes, we could say, okay, we're gonna do, you know, before we finish tonight, we're gonna make sure we complete 500 squats, uh, 200 push-ups, and, um, you know, a, a series of sprints. And tomorrow, none of those students would be back <laughs> because the recreational populace, 35 to 55, is not generally ready to work out the same way 
um, that younger people are. And again, I know that there are some 35 to 55 year olds who are in stellar shape, but my experience, or if you ask about the hundreds of adults we have in our program, they are recreational adults who are looking to, and here's a great phrase, they're looking to feel and move better, right? right they're right. looking to feel right. and move better. Right. Right. You know, Of course, they'd like to look a little bit better, but if you ask the average mom who's got you know two children or the dad who's a busy uh, um uh, you know, with the projects and the gift. And I, let me not be biased at all. There are, there are dads who are staying at home. There are moms who are staying at home. There are dads who are in the workplace. Moms who are in the workplace. Either way, if you said what level of priority is getting a six-pack ab for you, um, it's probably not as high. But mm -hmm. not having a 3 p.m. energy slump. Yeah, right. Not, you know, not having their back hurt all day getting a little bit more physically active and being mm. able to play with their kids and go up and down stairs um, without a lot of discomfort. These are, these are the things they're looking for. So I'm sorry, sir, to answer your question, what we have found is yes, even in our family class, they want to do some push-ups, They want to yeah. do some squats. They want to do some lunges. And the phrase or the, the thinking that I would say is this, Hey, I'm a Taekwondoist first and foremost. Mm -hmm. As the majority of our training is kicking and punching and blocking and forms and self-defense and one-step sparring. But when your adults, and this goes even for our adult classes, because I want to emphasize again that we have fairly filled, fairly good sized adult classes in most of our locations, come to your classes when they flip through Shape Magazine or when they flip, flip through Men's Fitness Magazine, do they see anything there, particularly body weight exercises, that you're also doing? And so we've started to incorporate some yoga type stretches, right? So we're going to do uh, what I know is as cat and cow and cobra and uh, child pose or whatever. That's going to yeah. happen in our in our warm ups. And then the adult is going to say, oh, I heard my friend talking about yoga or I saw this article about healthy back stretches. Oh, but I'm getting that at Taekwondo. If you know if the adult men's fitness, they're talking about, oh, five great body weight exercises you can do. And then we're doing those lunges, we're doing those squats, we're doing those plank holds, right? Again, we're just interspersing it with some of our training. It's not the main focus, but we want to make sure our adults can move and feel better. Um, and we want to make sure that they're not seeing too much out there in the fitness space that never shows up on our mats. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, oh, my God. I, I mean, realize the time that went by. Uh, we have only uh, 10 minutes uh, left. I'm glad we did ask, uh, get to a lot of the questions while we were uh, having having uh, our chat. Um, so uh, I guess if you uh, just kind of recently joined, I uh, got uh, myself, Master Ali Gafour from 2020 Armor, and uh, with me, Master uh, Michael Mertens, owner of five schools and 1,800 students. And we're talking about the topic of uh, recruiting uh, adult students. And so we're near the we're near the end. Um, so we'll, we'll go through some of the questions. If if someone has been holding their questions until now, please uh, post them. Um, and so we and if, or if we didn't answer your question already, please post it again, uh, just because we did get quite a lot, and I wanted to make sure we get to them. Um, and if it's still a, a burning question, um, and uh, while those are coming in, uh, reminding people again, um, TechnoProfessionals.com, uh, a, a great uh, website for resources for questions like this and, and many others. And in April, um, if, if you go there, there'll be a, a information about the, the seminar in April in, in Texas. We will be there with, with a, a long, uh, a bunch of other great successful martial art uh, school owners that you can ask all type of your burning questions. Uh, and, and what I've really found was that people love um, uh, sharing the knowledge. Like there's no competition right. between, you know, a person in Buffalo and in, in LA and, and Toronto. No one really cares, right? Like they just wanted to share their, their knowledge and um, so, so I think that'll be really beneficial for you to 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 go there. We've been there three times, three years, uh, and, and and fantastic every time. And Ma Master Michael Mertens is a uh, uh, very professional. Um, you know that name, Taekwondo professionals. Are very he takes him very seriously. Uh, I think one time he started at 9.01. I was a little bit disappointed. It's supposed to be at 9 o'clock, but one time it started at 9.01. Uh, but yeah, I, everything is always to whatever he says, he, he delivers and, 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 and then some. So you won't be disappointed. Uh, and then for us, we do have a special of 5.25 per vest uh, going on today uh, because of this uh, uh, special guest that we have in the webinar. And you can go to 2020armor.com. Uh, to make your purchase there and uh, as i mentioned in, in the conversation today our, our product is very much used by children and adults 
and uh, they enjoy it very much. Um, so some of the questions that uh, that came in were, uh, I still need a six pack, I'm single. All right, sir, good luck with that. <laughs> but I know you have very uh, you have access to a lot of resources to get your six pack. Um, one gentleman asked, how many family classes do you run during the week? I, I believe you mentioned you did about five or six during the week. Correct. Yep. It's, 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 it's not a, it's again, it's not a one-off. It's not a special class per week. It's one of our main programs. So five to six days a week, most of our locations have it every day. Right. Yeah. It's a core part of the program. It's not something that you do just supplemental. It's uh yeah, it's, it's very fundamental. Uh, this is actually a, a, a good and interesting question um, by Varesh. Uh, he said the, the learning kids for kids and adults are different. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that from progression and, and belt testing? So, uh, again, I'm going to say, you know, first, philosophically, again, we like the fact that we have all three types of training programs available. So a children's program in the children's class, it's going to be the most focused and uh, I don't want to say structured, but the most focused on, OK, a lot of repetition with an instructor directing it on all the curriculum requirements that a child has. The adult classes, the adults are going to get a little bit more intense workout. The explanations obviously can be a little shorter. Adults can do some solo work because we say, I want you to work on this. And then they go work on that. You, you don't normally do that with young with young children, right? You've got to stay on top of them. Uh, for the way that our system works, because I mentioned that white belt to black belt learn the same requirements, whether they're eight years old or whether they're 38 years old. However, the time frame that they may achieve the belt could obviously be different. So someone could be a green belt for three months and progress, and somebody else could be a green belt for you know four months in order to progress. And I will say that even adults, um, adults and children, it's not an automatic that the adult is going to learn faster or be more proficient quicker. Right. Um, again, particularly when we're talking, remember that we're talking about the recreational adult market, right. not the high intense fitness uh, adult market. So I know that there's some 38 year old adults who are very inflexible, very awkward, right. didn't ever play any sports. Right. And I'll be, and I'll say that there's going to be some eight year old athletic focused little guys or ladies who will perform that kick and that form faster and more easily than, right. the, than their than their mom or dad that definitely true right um, yeah they're not scraping the rust to do that right <laughs> yeah. so i mean i guess it you know uh again in a family class the way that our instructors and i'd like to believe that our world-class instructors are awfully darn skilled otherwise we wouldn't have gotten to the size that we are but they're still good at breaking down the material right in a way that everyone's going to understand and keeping the pace moving now what i will say is if I was to say, okay, everybody, we're going to put our right hand, we're going to put our right hand over our shoulder. Ready? Right hand, reach it out over here, put it over your shoulder. That level of explanation isn't necessary for an adult, right? I could say, oh, Master Vigor, put your right hand over your shoulder. But when I'm doing it at the, quote, children's level, if you're there sitting, standing next to your son or daughter, you're not upset or bored about the fact that I'm doing that. Does that make sense, sir? Because you you know that, oh, oh, he, the instructor is doing the explanation in a way that everybody can understand, including the children. And right. if you don't like that pace of explanation, well, then you would just come to the adult class by yourself. Right. Uh, if that makes sense. So I, I feel like our adults, you know, toggle very well between, oh, I'm in front of only children. This is the level of explanation I can give. Oh, I'm in front of only adults. This is the explanation and pace I can use. I'm in front of a mixed group. This is the pace that I'm going to use. And again, if, if it sounds difficult, I guess I would say it sounds varied. It, it, it takes a skill set to do it, but um, it can be done and it, it continues to work very well for us, which is, you know, my main emphasis. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Um, we have about, about five minutes left. Um, there was uh, one question from Master Chi Bates, um, a little bit, uh, May, might be off topic, not sure. It might, it might actually uh, relate to, to the, the students. I got this uh, question on another channel, was uh, how to compete with a uh, more mature club. So if your club is only two, three years old and you're going against the 20 year old school, what are some of the things that you could do and does family class tie into that in any way? Um, well, I mean, you know, just in general, right? Um, uh, you know, again, using the Taekwondo competing example, Sooner or later, the champion loses, <laughs> right? The right the the yeah, five time right. national champion, the eight time, and I guess some people retire, but otherwise, right, right. sooner or later they retire. So I can honestly say that 
um, you know, for our world-class affiliates, because they've opened in schools, you know, or opened in areas all over the country. At one point, they were the newest school in town. And right. now they are the biggest school in town. And I don't mean that in an aggressive way or a competitive way, because I hope that everybody's doing well. But I would say that you should focus on within your own school, how well are you servicing your students? And before you can be the biggest place in town, maybe you can be the cleanest place in town, mm. the friendliest place in town, the most organized place in town. And yes, maybe you look for some of these competitive advantages, like we have family classes and maybe our competitor doesn't. Right. Um, but in many cases, what uh, the biggest factor that has to, uh, that affects how fast and how large your school grows is not what's happening outside of your walls, but what's happening inside of your walls and what you and your people are actually doing with your uh, uh, students. So um, I'm, I would almost say that I'm aware of my competition, but I don't think about them that often uh, because right. I'm busy making sure that we, you know, if we ever ask ourselves, how could we teach better? How could we tr um, service better? We're always finding an answer to that. Right. We're, we're always finding a way to do it better. Right. Um, well, guys, um, you know, we're, we're down to the last few minutes here. I, I hope you got some value out of that. Uh, Master Michael Merton's just bursting at the seams with uh, with great advice and, and knowledge. You just got a, a taste of this is just one topic that we that we covered. Right. Um, and uh, if you if you haven't if you're not following Master Michael Merton's, please um, uh, follow him on, on Facebook and then go to taekwondoprofessionals.com. To uh, to learn about, more about that organization and the event, and um, I'll give Master Mike Morton's the last word here uh, before before I finish off. Uh, thank you for everybody who last, uh, asked the questions. Uh, if you go to 2020armor.com, we do have that special again going on for for today. But sir, uh, the last word uh, goes to you. Well, I appreciate that, sir. First of all, thanks for having me as your guest. Um, thank you to everybody that joined us and that posted a question. I really appreciate that. The fact that you were so enthusiastically participating yeah. means that you're uh, action taker. So I'm hopefully, hopefully gave you some value that you can apply. Um, I'll echo something that Master Grafour said earlier, um, that going to an event like ours, the Taekwondo Professionals uh, National Convention, um, is informational. It's motivational and it creates relationships, right? You don't, you may not even know that there's a half dozen people out there who want to be your best friend in the in the taekwondo field that you can be networking with, connecting with, and can be helping you um, uh, all together. And I will emphasize, I'm respectful of all martial artists, and I have friends who are uh, uh, teach other martial arts. However, my commitment and my passion in the martial art that changed my life was taekwondo, and right. therefore taekwondo professionals is all Taekwondo instructors. Right, which is very unique, uh, and, yeah. And there's a special kind of energy as a result of that. There's a special kind of atmosphere because of that. We mm -hmm. do tend to be a more respectful uh, atmosphere. We are saying yes, sir, and no, sir, and thank you, sir, and recognizing people with their master and grandmaster titles. And it's a great event to bring your staff to because of that as well. Um, so please look into it, taekwondoprofessionals.com. You can learn about our services. You can learn about our convention. And you connect. You can connect with me on Facebook if you like. I'm happy to answer any questions if you reach out to me that I didn't get a chance uh, to address. I want to see everybody uh, help more people through Taekwondo, uh, but I know you, you you shouldn't be trying to go at it alone. There's uh, there's resources out there to help you, and and I'd like to be part of that. Great. Thank you, sir, again for your time. Thank you, everyone, for your questions and for uh, giving us uh, the, the kudos at the end. We got a bunch of those near the end. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your positivity and. Uh, have a great weekend. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you too. Okay.